Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's talk about code snippets, specifically using ulti snips and vim snippets. But if you're using VS Code, Sublime Text, Emacs, TextMate, or a different editor, then everything we're about to go over in this video will apply to those editors as well, except you'll be using different extensions and plugins for that editor instead. So I think the best way to go over the value of what snippets do is by showing you an example of how they work. So I'm going to go ahead here and take a look at the build a SAS app with Flask source code. This is from one of my courses. And now let's take a look here at one of the HTML files right here. This just renders a very basic error 404 page. And you can see down here in Vim, this is a combination of Jinja and HTML because this file has both HTML tags as well as Jinja tags. So take a look at this. So let's say I wanted to add a second div underneath this container, right? I can just start typing in div, maybe add a class of whatever, and then I can close my div tag here, right? And then I can also maybe just go ahead and add a paragraph where we just do like a hello world, right? And this would totally work. No problem with that gets the job done. But uh, you know, there's a lot of typing to get all of that out. You know, wouldn't it be a little bit nicer if you can make that easier to do? And that's basically what snippets allow you to do. So now if I type in something like div and I hit the tab key, it just expands out the div and puts me exactly where I want to go in insert mode as well with them. So I can just start typing here. So maybe what I want to do now is hit the P key, right? Because I want to add a paragraph and I'll hit tab again. And now I can just start typing my hello world. Now, of course, you know, I can add my class of foo here, but uh, it doesn't really matter. In that case, you know, the class is optional. But that's basically like a super high level explanation of what snippets allow you to do, right? It allows you to type in some, you know, HTML tag name or an abbreviation of something. And it's not limited to HTML, by the way. This works with all major programming language, you know, Python, Ruby, Elixir, PHP, Node. Uh, bash, all sorts of different stuff. And it's pretty interesting because you can also very easily add your own custom snippets. And that's something we're going to do in this video a little bit later on. But I mentioned here that this file is both an HTML file and a Jinja file, uh, which means we can actually take advantage of Jinja snippets as well. So if I wanted to add another block here, I can just hit block, hit tab, and now I can just start typing in uh, the name of my block. And if I hit tab again, it actually just puts me right where I would want to go, right? Typically, you'd want your line to be indented, and then you can just start typing in your HTML here. Uh, that's one really cool thing about the way uh, snippets are set up. They're set up with like placeholders. I don't know their exact name, but you can basically, when you define the snippet, you can basically decide where you go after you hit tab. So, you know, if you wanted to put it here, you can do it here, but you can also like hit tab again and maybe, you know, not be indented. Now that wouldn't make sense for this snippet, but you have full control over where you go after you hit tab. You know, maybe it'll put you outside the tag. Like you can do basically whatever you want, uh, which is pretty cool. So since we're inside of a Jinja uh, template over here, you know, that means we can do things like if as well, you know, like if you had some condition here to situationally show different links in the HTML, you know, this is really nice. And uh, I find myself using tags or I find myself using snippets all the time, right? It's like, you're just naturally typing HTML. You're like, yep, I want this and I want that. And I just want that. And then I copy this line and paste it a couple of times. Now I know there are other things like Emmet to make writing HTML a little bit faster or more efficient, but I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's not like, it's funny. It's like my, my job is not writing HTML, but it actually is uh, writing HTML, but typing out something like a couple of elements from a list is not really the thing that's like making me uh, spend a lot of my time, right? Like this list literally took me like three seconds to create. And honestly, you know, typically I wouldn't even have multiple items in the list because, you know, what would you do here? You would typically uh, maybe loop over something in a, in a database to show multiple items in a list. And I guess that leads up into maybe something uh, a little bit interesting too. So for example, with Jinja, you have the concept of for loops. So notice here, I'm going to hit four and I'm going to hit tab. And in this case, there happens to be multiple snippets available based on the language of this file. So we can have option number one is the, the HTML one. We, right, we can see that down here. And option number two is the Jinja one. So I want the Jinja one. So I'm gonna hit the two key here and uh, I'll hit enter to apply that. And now suddenly I can do a for loop here because that's the Jinja one. So Vim, uh, and I'm pretty sure other code editors as well, have very well support for dealing with multiple file extensions. And this comes up very, very frequently when you're dealing with things like web development, right? Because you have your templating language and you have HTML. That happens quite a lot. So we've been taking a look here at the HTML stuff for quite some 
quite some time, but you know, it's not limited to HTML as well, right? It's like if I go to the bottom of this file maybe and I'll just start adding some new things here. Uh, you know, if I type in def and hit tab, that's gonna allow me to define a new function in Python. And I can type in the name of the function and I hit tab again. Now I can start putting in some arguments to my function. I can hit tab again. Now I can just start uh, manipulating my doc string, right? Which is, you know, a best practice. Your functions should be pretty documented. And then down here, you know, the last thing that we want to do here, you know, in Python, you can put the pass keyword to do nothing, basically. But, you know, this is where you can start just doing, you know, whatever you want to do uh, inside of your function. So while I'm actually programming, uh, this is something, you know, I do all the time. So like when I'm ready to add a new function, I'm typing def tab and I'm going to go out this and do this. And what's really cool is, you know, sometimes these pre-built snippets aren't uh, what you really like. So it's very, very easy with Vim at least to customize how they are. But before we go about that, I think it's also interesting to go over um, what you can do to find these snippets because you're not just going to wake up one morning and, and install both of these packages here and, and understand like what every single snippet is available to you. And looking them up on Google is kind of annoying. I mean, you can go into the Git repo and look at them there or keep them open on the side and that totally works. But if you're using FCF, which I've done a video for in the past, then you can actually just run the snippets command. And what you can do now is you can get a complete list of all the available snippets that you can use uh, for this specific file extension. So for example, let's say that I wanted to do an if condition, right? I can just type in if here, that will give me a regular if condition, but then it's like, oh, well, look at that. If I do if E, then I can do an if else. So that's what an if else is, by the way, in Python. So this is pretty nice because now you have a way to easily explore the different snippets that are available to you because you might think like, well, okay, if does this, that's really easy. But now it's like, well, what do I want to do when I want to do like an if else or something, right? It's like, you can do that. And then you can also uh, explore this as well. Like, wow, you can even do if with two E's to do an if else and then an elif. So if you do something like this and hit tab, you get all of this typed out for you nicely. And you can just tab through and start adding uh, your custom logic to one of these snippets. And this is pretty nice. So that's an example of basically of how snippets work uh, in Python specifically. And we've went over all of the snippets that we just talked about. Uh, they exist already. I didn't have to create them. So if you go to, uh, what is it? Well, I guess we can go over this now as well. So there's two different packages that you would install at Vim to get ulti snips and Vim snippets working. So you have this thing called ulti snips and ulti snips is basically the snippet engine to make all of the functionality itself work. And, you know, you can always read their readme file if you'd like. And, you know, it shows you how to like quick start it. And I'll show you my dot files, how to get it installed as well. Very, very easy. But then you have this thing called Vim snippets. And Vim snippets is really the repo that has all the individual snippets that you can take a look at. So if you take a look here at the snippets folder, there's also an ulti snips folder. By the way, there's two different formats. And uh, we'll, go over, we'll go over that in a second here. But you can see here, when we go to the snippets folder, you know, there's, there's all sorts of different snippets here, right? We were just taking a look at the one for Python. So like if you wanted to look them up and you're not using FCF or your editor of choice doesn't support anything like that, then you can just find your snippet plugin and then be like, okay, well, that's the snippets file. And like, these are all the snippets that, you know, they're defined like this. So that's one way to look them up. And uh, installation of this is actually quite simple with Vim. So if you go to your vimrc file, and I scroll down here, where is it at? It's somewhere near the bottom, I think. Yeah, so let me also make this a little bit bigger. Um, we can see here, all you have to do, I use plug, by the way, which I have another video on using plug to install Vim plugins. It just involves installing two different plugins, right? The ulti snips one, as well as the Vim snippets one. You know, the Vim snippets one, just as a reminder, gives you all the snippets available to use, not just the engine. And uh, this is like a shorthand syntax with plug to be able to just, well, I don't know if it's plug, it may be Vim, but basically it allows you to run uh, two commands almost. It's not quite like a Unix pipe. It's more like an and and, I guess. But yeah, it's just a little bit nicer. I like doing this in my VimRC file because it shows that, you know, these two plugins are very, very related. Like you typically wouldn't use Vim snippets without ulti snips and vice versa. So now let's go back to the code editor here. And uh, I had another project set up here which is a static website using Jekyll. It's uh, my podcast. And this one's kind of nice because, uh, well, the site's nice, I think at least, but this project is nice to demonstrate the custom functionality of using snippets. So let's say that 
I want to create a draft here, right? I have one draft for this one. This is going out in uh, tomorrow, actually, April 6th. But let me just go ahead and just add a new file here. I'm just going to call it foo.markdown just for now because I'm going to delete this later. And uh, yeah, so you can just start typing in markdown, right? You can type in like something like link and uh, this will give you a markdown link. You know, this comes uh, stock. You don't have to do anything special to set that up. But actually, and let me open up one of my posts here, the, the podcast, and I, whatever, I'm just picking a random one here. But if you take a look here at this, notice that there is a lot of metadata associated to this post, right? This is just how Jekyll works. Like what we're looking at here is called front matter, but it's not important to really understand that. Uh, what's important is we have all these different properties defined. It's like, I need to pick out the layout, like how big is the MP3? How long is the MP3? You know, what was the guest name? Because each podcast have a has a different guest. Like, you know, there's a profile and a website and what category is this? Is a podcast or an interview? And there's all different tags for this as well. We have a title, a description, and then like a little entry paragraph about what's going to go on. And then we have show notes and then we have links and then we have shameless plugs to my courses and uh, because I don't add ads to my podcasts. And uh, yeah, I mean, so if I want to make a brand new podcast episode, I have a couple of options, right? I can, I can create a brand new file. I can open up another podcast that I've already done, copy the whole thing, paste it into the new one, and then start editing as I go. And that's totally fine. That totally works. And I actually do that once in a while, even having the snippets available. But uh, I have also created a couple of custom snippets of my own. So if I actually type in, and I'm inside of a markdown file now, and I type in podcast, well, then I get a complete loadout of all the things really that I would want in this example file here, right? It already sets me up to be uh, you know, the layout and the MP3 bytes. Of course, like if I'm making a new podcast, I don't know this information ahead of time, but you know, now I can just start typing in and hitting tab, you know, and it's going to keep tabbing me to where I want to go. So, okay, I'm, I'm ready to type in a title or something like that and the description. And there's like the intro paragraph and uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. And this was actually very, very easy to set up, but also, you know, if I want to do an interview instead of a podcast, then I have to just type in interview and I'm done. And now it's a little bit different. You know, now the category is interviews and like the MP3 data isn't there. Totally separate uh, tag or it's totally separate snippet. Now, I also have um, a blog like nickgenatakis.com, which is not a part of this running in production project, but it is a another static website using Jekyll. So in that case, I have a couple of other temp uh, other snippets that I've set up as well. For example, when I want to write a blog post about a Docker tip, I just type in tip and I hit tab and it lays out the front matter just how I like. So I can just do this. And by the way, uh, I guess I can go to my website just to show you how this works here. Like for example, Docker, like I have a whole bunch of Docker tips here, right? Docker tip 84, it fixed obscure Docker daemon errors, blah, 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 blah. And like, this is the blog post itself. And this is the uh, front matter of the Jekyll setup that makes it all work. So it puts me right here so I can just type in like the Docker tip, blah, 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 blah. Like very, very uh, useful. Then I have some other ones as well, like video and I hit tab. And this sets me up for a video specific blog post where I have things like a YouTube embed with like a table of contents. Because by the way, all of the YouTube videos that I record, I do put them back on my site as well because I don't just do videos on my site, you know, I do uh, other stuff as well. But like, for example, this is the latest video at the time I'm making this video, like if that template produces something like this. Well, in this case, I had code snippets instead of table of contents, but uh, that's because this video is very short. Didn't really need a, a table of contents because it was like literally a six minute video. But uh, enough about this specific stuff, because chances are you're not going to make like this specific snippet. Although, you know, if you're blogging, maybe you have some other ones as well that you would want to add. So I'm just going to, uh, write that out. So now let's go over how I defined those custom snippets because it's actually not bad at all. So what you can do is you can just create a .vim folder in your home directory. And if I go here and go to the snippets folder, which is something I created as well, here is where you can list out all of your different snippets for whatever file extensions that you want. So for example, I have this one here for markdown and, and uh, a little bit easier to look at it in here instead of uh, the terminal because there's actually syntax highlighting support. So you can see here like that snippet for tip. All I really had to do was define the name of the snippet, right? This is the thing you would type to trigger it. So you would type this and hit tab. 
And then what's it gonna do? Well, it is going to output what you see here, like up until the next snippet. So in this case, it adds all the front matter and uh, these squiggly variables with the numbers is what happens when you hit tab, like after that tip and you hit tab again, well, it's gonna put you right here at the one. And then you can start typing, you can do whatever you want, or you can hit tab and where is it gonna bring you? It's gonna bring you to the number two. Now, in this case though, notice how there is uh, a description here. Now this could be literally anything. This is like the default value of what happens. So for example, if I go back to tip here and I hit tab and I start typing like, hey, you know, this is my tip, like whatever, and I hit tab again, notice how this description is now selected, right? This is like a placeholder. I can do whatever I need to do there. And uh, you know, this is optional. So when you don't have the placeholder, then nothing uh, is where, like after you hit tab, there's nothing there, right? It was totally empty. So if I go back to here once more and I hit tip tab, it's com completely empty, right? It says Docker tip and then and the pound symbol, but that was not a part of this number one. So you can just see here, right? This is like a video one that we just looked at. There's like a one and a two and a three and a four. You know, you can put as many as you want. I'm sure there's some upper limit, but uh, I've never had an issue with that. You know, typically I'm only dealing with a couple at a time. And then like an interview one, same deal, like it goes through. And look at that. I actually see a bug here in the snippet. So apparently I forgot the number three. Uh, cool, so I will, I'll need to update that. <laughs> and probably the same issue here as well because interviews and podcasts are pretty similar. Yeah, I think what happened here was there was a three at some point, uh, some other property here, but I got rid of that and I just didn't update the numbers and uh, it still works. So that is pretty cool. So yeah, I mean, this is basically a very, very quick introduction to using code snippets. I feel like they save a lot of time and I know that uh, some code editors, including Vim, they have the concept of like a language server so at Vim, there's, what is it, like the COC one that works with NeoVim and more modern versions of Vim. And uh, VS Code, of course, you know, they have language server support as well. And that's a little bit more powerful than snippets, right? These snippets don't require you to run any type of language server at all. They are just static files sitting on the file system where you hit tab after some type of like snippet name and then you're off to the races. Like you don't need to install anything extra. Now, of course that means you lose some uh, like special functionality, right? It's like these snippets are not gonna like know about your code base. You're not gonna be able to like autocomplete like method names from a Ruby project or something like that or a Python project, whatever. But uh, the value I think of snippets are still very high. So they just save you from typing a lot they don't require setting up a language server, which I think is uh, actually wonderful, especially if you're someone like me who works with a different, a uh, lot of different languages, right? You know, I work with Python, Elixir, Ruby, Bash, a lot of YAML, a lot of, you know, other stuff as well. And, you know, I don't want to have like 15 different language servers running on my dev box all the time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this video, I don't want it to get too long. That's basically an introduction to using snippets. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to be using them or you have used them or you even have... Uh, created a bunch of custom snippets, feel free to link to your Git repos or things like that. And uh, with that said, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.